welcome to Saturday Stories. This is the Society of Illustrators monthly featured illustrator program where you get to see behind the scenes, meet new illustrators and authors, author illustrators, and see how they do their picture books and also draw along as the workshop portion of the program is the second part of uh, the morning's activity. And it's uh, my delight to introduce you to Zoe per Persico. Yep. And, she, <laughs> and she is down in Florida. And I'll tell you a little bit more about her in just a moment. Um, I just wanted to let you know that at the Society of Illustrators running through October, there is the Brotherman to Batman um, illustration show. And this is celebrating the amazing artwork from African-American, a, a very, um, amazing selection of some of the best African-American comic artists. And so that will be running um, for the next few months. And that would be a great um, show for kids to see. If you are in the New York area, Society of Illustrators protocols are on our website. You can see more about the event by going on the website and looking at exhibitions and events that are currently running. I am running an after school, uh, sorry, I am, I'm going to do after school in fall, but before that, in the summer, I have my second um, illustration series that I'm running for kids who like to draw characters and create mini books and zines. Uh, that'll be in August, um, 1st of August through the 5th of August in the afternoon from 2 to 3.30, and um, there's also information about that on our website. It's not too late to sign up, we still have a few spots. And um, what else do we have? Um, we have obviously more programs coming in the fall and our original art exhibition will be through November and December. So that's very exciting. I always enjoy the fall winter programs for kids at the society. So um, one last thing before we start, I want to thank the Cornelia T. Bailey Foundation for their generous uh, sponsorship of our programming for kids. And that brings this Saturday stories to you for free. And they firmly believe, as does the Society of Illustrators, that books really enhance and inspire and um, create the dreams of children. So we all love picture books, as you know here, and that's um, what Saturday stories is all about. And that brings me now to Zoe Prosico. And Zoe obviously is an amazing illustrator and she's also had her first book here, Georgia's Terrific Colorific Experiment, which is a really fun book. And the book is about a girl, Georgia, who's from a family of artists, everybody in her family, including her grandparents and even the dog, are very creative and artistic. But Georgia has a passion for science. And through the story, we find out how she manages to sort of stand by her scientific, um, uh, you know, her, her passion for the sciences, but also collaborate with her family finally. So we'll have this lovely story read to us by Zoe shortly. And also Zoe will show us how she came up with the illustrations and how important color is to sort of evoke emotion and, um, you know, the different atmospheres that can be created with color as well. Obviously, you can think of some yourselves, like bright colors could be for a daytime scene or dark colors could be stormy. You know, you can really follow along. I'm sure you've um, got your own uh, ideas about colors. So do have a few colors um, with you today if you have some available. It could be colored pencils, could be markers. I've got my um, Tombow markers here ready. I might do a little bit of drawing as well. Uh, Zoe is in Florida. She um, graduated from art school. She actually graduated from the Savannah School of Art and Design and then really developed her own style through doing a lot of um, drawing and practice, uh, taking some online classes and really evolving into her own style. And she's got a fantastic style. I really like her style a lot. And um, she's quite influenced by graphic um, novels, that sort of style with a lot of expression, a lot of character movement and background scenes, which are not always easy to do. She does really amazing background scenes as well. Um, and Zoe, I, I would love to introduce you uh, to start the program. So without further ado, uh, over to Zoe Persico. Thank you for joining us this morning. Oh my gosh, you're just flattering me right now. <laughs> thank you. Wow. Thank you, Claire. Hi, everybody. I'm Zoe. Uh, super nice to meet you all. I hope you can hear me okay. 
Uh, so excited to be here. Yeah, uh, I am primarily an illustrator, uh, new time author as of 2019, and more exciting projects coming along the way. So look out for that. So I guess I will start sharing my screen now. Uh, let me get my lovely, uh, let's see, open with preview. Okay, let me share my screen. Oh, it says I am still a participant. So I don't know if I can share my screen right now. Hang on. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, okay. We have Tim at the Society who's behind the scenes. He will just tweet that right now. <laughs> All good. Hey, you know what? At least we got everything else under control. <laughs> we got everything else good. <laughs> Oh, in the meantime, I'll just remind right, everyone. So you should be good to go. Awesome, okay. awesome. Oh, there it is. Thank you so much. Okay, share. I was just going to remind everyone, Zoe, to also um, not be shy about sending in their illustrations. They can email them to me and then I can share them with you or, uh, and, and follow Zoe on her Instagram, check out her stuff on her website, etc., and ask questions in the chat. I'm sure you'll have lots of questions for Zoe. So let's have a look at her presentation now. Yeah. Cool. I had a lot of fun putting this together. Every time I do a presentation, whether it's for other artists at another workshop or uh, doing school visits, which I, I terribly miss. So I hope I get a chance to do it again. I always like doing a little personal drawings throughout the presentation. So I hope you like them. So, <laughs> hey, yes. all right. So. Uh, I am an illustrator and also an author and uh, sometimes a visual development artist. So uh, an illustrator is someone who illustrates the pictures in a book, whether it's a picture book, a chapter book, a board book, so on and so forth. An author is the person who writes uh, all the words for said book. Uh, so I've mostly been the, the drawer and I've had the opportunity to be a, an author. And uh, a visual development artist is someone who gets to work behind the scenes on projects, especially new projects for animation. So I've worked with clients such as DreamWorks, uh, Spin Master, and so on and so forth uh, regarding projects that they would like to greenlit. Um, some other things that I like to do, oh, uh, also included my favorite colors because we're talking about colors today. I am a huge fan of oranges, reds, greens, mauves. Uh, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. So uh, I feel like like different colors that I like is like my mood. It's always changing. I always find new colors that I love <laughs> and I gravitate to. Uh, but other than art, I, you know, I do it as a job. I also do it as a hobby. I love it. But I like to also have other activities that I enjoy doing outside of doing art. Uh, I love to play tabletop role playing games such as Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and so on and so forth. I get together with a lot of my friends. It's a great way to communicate with all of each other, especially when we, I have friends from all over the country. It's, especially during the pandemic, it's been such a great way to stay connected and not only stay social, but uh, stretching your creative brain, especially making your own characters. It's definitely uh, a great exercise for me when I make my own characters. Uh, I also like to go hiking. Uh, there's not a ton of hiking, at least not anything mountainous in Florida, but when I get the opportunity to go on a nice stroll along the beach or if I'm out of town and I can go hike a mountain, why not? That I, I live for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I like uh, weightlifting. I've been getting back into the gym. Gotta, gotta stay healthy. Gotta, gotta work those muscles. Uh, I enjoy cooking. I love cooking. I'm mostly a vegetarian, so I like to challenge myself with uh, experimenting with different flavors and finding ways to substitute out other types of protein. Uh, I love to go thrift shopping, uh, whether in person or online. I, I, I tend to try to be a little bit more eco-conscious. So if I'm, not, um, if I'm not buying anything new, if I'm gonna buy something new, I try to do something that's more of a closet staple. But if, if not, I try to find other closet staples by doing the more eco-conscious way of <laughs> taking on recycled clothing. <laughs> Yes, yes. And uh, I love petting my dog. He's uh, sitting next to me right now. <laughs> he's wondering what I'm doing, but he's just, he's just chilling out. So yeah, his name is Zombie. He's a very good boy. Uh, so okay. I wanted to- Who is he, by the way? He, we don't know. He, he's oh, a kind okay. of a mutt. We adopted him from uh -huh. the Humane Society. We Aww. think uh, he's like, 
he looks big in pictures, but he's only like 60 pounds and he's kind of short actually. So we think he oh. might be a lab Husky German shepherd cute mix he's 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 got the little eyebrows he's very cute <laughs> i should have drawn a drawing of him oh you will you have to him. Yeah. i might have to now yeah uh, so also i want to do uh show some of the books that i've worked on uh this is just a very uh it's a pretty big handful but this is probably the most recent projects that i'm proud of uh, including George's terrific colorific experiment, but other ones that maybe you might recognize would be Greta and the Giants, uh, Mermaids Fast Asleep, uh, The What Ifs, uh, which the sequel of The What Ifs, The I Heards, comes out in September this year. So, oh, great. Uh, they, uh, had a lot of, I have a lot of fun with those books. They're so much fun. Uh, I've done UB Mommy, I did dozens of dachshunds. Uh, I had an opportunity to uh, illustrate Disney princesses for. Uh, <laughs> uh, a flower girl book, which was a very sweet to do. I've done plenty of board books. I've done My Little Pony. I love My Little Pony. Uh, grew up with My Little Pony, so it was a really cool opportunity to uh, <laughs> get to do little golden books for them. And uh, I recently got into doing chapter books, which is really exciting. So I just finished the first Princess Olivia uh, with Lucy Hawking as the author, which is kind of crazy. Um, and then uh, one of my most recent projects that I absolutely, one of my favorite projects ever has been working with Hazy Dell with uh, the Cryptid Baby Book series. So I've done Mothman Baby, Nessie Baby, and then uh, coming out later this year are Vampire Baby and Krampus Baby. They're totally up my alley. It, it's like perfect for, you know, parents who just kind of love paranormal and the cryptids and stuff. They're, I, they're so much fun. I hope you guys, if you know someone who would find them interesting or have a little kid who's really into cryptids I recommend yeah. them <laughs> fantastic thank you and I I wanted to share too that I am now I'm in the graphic novels hooray so um I'm currently working on my first uh, debut graphic novel middle grade uh called how to talk to your succulent uh I've been working on the story for a really long time actually started off as a picture book um but uh yeah, it ended up turning into a graphic novel and it's it's been such a pleasure to work on and I, I can't wait to share it with you all in uh, 2025. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> oh, we'll have you come to the society for this one. Oh, I, I would love to. Oh, I, it's going to be, the, if we're talking color, there's going to be a lot of color in this. <laughs> uh, so very excited. Uh, I also wanted to share what art materials I use. I, I get uh, a lot of questions. Um, regarding this. So I thought it'd be fun to just kind of draw out my materials. I primarily work digitally. Uh, I work on a Sinting Pro 24, which is basically a giant monitor that you just draw on. It's really big. Um, uh, and then uh, the program of choice is Photoshop CS6. Uh, it's a very, if, you know, I have younger users on here who are familiar with Procreate, very similar to that. It's, it's the old school Procreate. <laughs> uh, but I also like to use a lot of uh, traditional materials, especially at uh, personal projects, or I'll do gallery shows where I like to do uh, larger traditional paintings. So uh, my materials of choice include synthetic watercolor brushes. I'll use, uh, I'll show these, I'll show a lot of these materials later, but one of these cool water pens, mm -hmm. very well for watercolors. Uh, I usually use in a mixed media sketchbook, but if I'm working outside of that, I prefer hot color, uh, hot press watercolor paper. I'll use artist crayons. So they're called Neo Color 2s. They're really fun. I really enjoy them and you'll see me play with them later. I love color pencils. I used to not like color pencils a lot at all, actually, um, but finally found the groove with them later on. And so two different paints that I like to use are watercolor and gouache. And you may be wondering, what's the difference? So watercolor and gouache are very similar. They're both water-based medium paints, but watercolor is usually used in a more transparent fashion. So you will use a lot more water and do more of a layering technique versus gouache, which although is a water-based medium, uh, is used more as an opaque paint, more similarly to acrylic, but it just doesn't dry as fast, which is great. So I'm excited to work with those in a bit. Uh, <laughs> I, I was visiting my parents, uh, up north, up in Illinois, uh, a couple, 
gosh, it was probably two or three weeks ago. And I had the opportunity to kind of go through some old uh, baby pictures of myself. I thought, it'd be fun. <laughs> I thought it'd be fun to share. Uh, I'm a 90s baby, which is really funny because I have more of my memories in the 2000s. But we're, we're, we're going to just say it'd be cool. I, I was born in the 90s. So I got to rock the Winnie the Pooh. I got to rock the jean jacket. <laughs> uh, they have Looney Tunes on the back. Uh, yeah, I was just a goofy kid. I was uh actually I was pretty shy originally I kept a lot to myself uh always always drew that was my immediate thing I was drawn to doing especially watching things like Pokemon or just Disney movies of the era so the run Disney, Disney renaissance uh, I'm trying to think of what else no I you like to dress up, Zoe. I see you in costume. <laughs> yeah, it was for a, <laughs> it, it was for a friend's birthday party. I actually included that image uh, because it was one of the only images that I could find where I've always worn glasses while I was since I was very young. And the first time I had to wear glasses, they actually had to put an eye patch on one of my eyes. <laughs> oh yes. So, yes. So I thought it could be relatable if there's other kids out there who need to have an eye patch over their eyes. I had I had to do that. So, <laughs> and then I had to include a picture of myself eating ice cream because ice cream is my favorite dessert. Still is, always will be. Yay. Yeah, and then I uh, had the opportunity to go through some old childhood art. I was very into manga and anime at a very young age. Uh, usually I have a lot more friends who kind of get more into manga and anime towards their high school years, but I found it pretty early. I think as a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old, I was sleuthing out for cool new things to be inspired by. And I remember walking into a Borders or a Barnes and Nobles and picking up this manga, thinking it was a comic book and thinking, what is this? This is so cool. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was really inspired by a lot of anime and manga and cartoons of the time. Uh, Neopets, of course, if we have any Neopets uh, fans in here, you, you'll know Neopets were absolutely a fun browser. I think it's still around. It's, it was a really fun browser game. And even I, it's kind of funny. I actually forgot that I drew comics as a kid. I didn't remember that I did this at all. So it was really fun to kind of look back and see all of these. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. They're really good. You were doing oh, these when you were 10? Yeah, it was like nine or 10. Yeah, so this was, this has to be 2004, if I had to guess. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of kids that love to do anime and they're really good. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, uh, I was definitely inspired. But uh, Pokemon, Sailor Moon, all that jazz. I, I was all into it. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to share where I've lived. So uh, I was born outside of uh, Chicago, suburbs of Chicago. I, I can't say Naperville is small or as we would quote neighbor thrill. It's definitely a really big suburb outside of Chicago. It's probably 40 minutes away. Mm -hmm. And outside of there, I graduated college and I knew, okay, I'm ready to experience the real world. Let's go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> uh, so I spent my first two years, you know, uh, in college post high school. Uh, I lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Awesome place. I love it so much. I always enjoy going back. Uh, and you can't, I love being by the lake. Michigan's a beautiful state. And then I was there for two years and I realized, you know what, I love living here, but I think I'd like to up my college experience a little bit more. So I took a leap of faith and I moved down to Savannah for school and did my last two years of my BFA there. Savannah is also very beautiful, yeah. <laughs> historic, uh, pretty close to the beach. Uh, just such great architecture and such a great art scene too. Everyone is so talented and so creative. I, I fed off of a lot of that creative juice and energy <laughs> while I was down there. Uh, afterwards, uh, after college, I moved back to Illinois. I spent uh, a month or two in Chicago with my partner, still partner. And we thought, you know what? we're still young. Let's do something crazy. Let, let's move out to Washington state. Why not? We love it out there. It's beautiful. So we did a huge road trip, moved all of our, actually, we didn't have that much stuff. We did a quick drive. What quick <laughs> one week drive, got to stop at a bunch of national parks, which was an amazing experience and uh, lived right outside of Seattle for two years. 
Wow. Again, another beautiful place. I, I am so lucky that I've been able to live in such amazing places. We were there for two years and uh, it's expensive. <laughs> so when I work in art and your partner works in uh, a different industry that's not related to tech, it's kind of, it, you can make it work, but you think, okay, let's start, let's go on the next adventure. So yeah. we spent a little bit of time um, in Southwest Michigan as we figured out our plans and we decided uh, to move to Jacksonville, Florida, where we currently are now. We've been here for uh, three, four years. Uh, he's always had family down here for a while. And when I lived in Savannah, I would drive down here all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's insane to see how much it's grown and uh, that there's still, there's a budding art scene coming out here, which is really cool. I've met some great people. So uh, it's hot. It's very hot right now, but it's nice okay. in the winter. <laughs> oh, yes. A big change from the snow yeah <laughs> exactly and you know in the fall in the fall winter spring it's absolutely perfect here i will take it i can mm -hmm. take a few months of sweating a little bit if it means i get to enjoy the rest of the year <laughs> <laughs> so i wanted to jump to talking about my first author illustrated book uh it started with one particular idea i was actually just i was working with uh an editor that emailed me and one day while I was in college and asked, do you have any ideas, any story ideas? And I thought, wow, this is way sooner than I thought <laughs> this was going to happen. <laughs> uh, and one of these ideas, you know, I started drawing this character and I, I started drawing with her another character of mine uh, from the sketch included, didn't go that direction. And originally started off as her as an artist. And despite it working with this editor and it ended up ending up falling through as life does as working in the industry does uh <laughs> i you know got back on my high horse and i i worked hard on the story again and i can't believe i have a book about it so i'd love hey. to kind of share my experience <laughs> yeah she uh, georgia originally started off as an art artist she was going to be an artist but it was either the editor at the time or my agent who mentioned uh, it was the story idea I was coming up with was her family were scientists and she was the artist and someone had the great idea of, well, what if you flipped it? And a light bulb went off thinking, well, you know, what's funny. I'm the only artist in my family. Uh, there's a lot of awesome, amazing stories about characters who are artists one of the only artists in their um in their family but what if we flipped it? it it'd be really fun to see the experience reversed where how would it be like if you had a family full of artists and you were a scientist complete opposite reverse of what my family and i are mm -hmm. so i thought okay this is great let's work with this so i wanted to showcase all of the different style iterations that I played with her. And this, this spans throughout years too. I think I started sketching her 2014, I think is was 2014 or 15 is when I started sketching her. And the book didn't come out until 2019. So uh, that was a bit of time, mm -hmm. but I tried a bunch of different styles. I tried something a bit more mid-century modern related. I tried different eye styles. I tried, do I go a little bit more expressive? Do I go more muted in a palette? Do I go more expressive in my color palette? So I always like showing this slide because it kind of shows uh, just how much change of ideas you can come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, originally she had a much more subdued outfit and I realized, you know, coming from a really fun and imaginative family, she's, she's obviously creative in her own right. And how could you not with, with that um, scenario and you would have funky fashion for it. I used to have funky fashion. Who doesn't love funky fashion? I thought, let's put a winter hat together with cowboy boots because why not? <laughs> and it just kind of stuck. And I really ended up uh, what we came up with for her. Yeah, she's adorable. Oh, thank you. Uh, I wanted to show some of my early page exploration. Again, the styles were way different. I thought I was going to go a little bit more mid-century inspired, especially because that was very popular at the time while I was exploring. And it still is popular in children's books today. And I thought, okay, I'll get my hand at it. But I 
I knew deep down that, okay, this wasn't the stuff. This wasn't me as much as I wanted to try and emulate something, uh, mm -hmm. especially that is, is a very popular style. I thought, you know what? No, I, I don't think this is the right way to go. And I'm glad I had that experimenting phase. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to try this out before we pitched anything. So this is currently taking back in time. This is just me and my agent just working together, uh, her helping me out with the writing and I'm kind of exploring different styles. And then finally we'll come together and she'll she told me, okay, this is it. This is, we're ready to pitch now. So not only does writing take a long time, but just coming up with the art style and character design in general definitely takes some time, but it's well worth it in the end. And I thought it'd be fun to show too, um, usually when you pitch a picture book, it's you show it in a picture book dummy. So a dummy is when you do a collection of rough sketches with the dialogue written into uh, dialogue, the, the text written into it. And you put it together in almost like a PDF booklet and you send it off. So when the editors who are taking your submission reads it, it reads like a book, you're flipping the pages. And one of the things that they encourage is to have at least one or two pieces of, okay, what could the art look like? Kind of to help you, helps you, help sell you and your idea and so forth. So the top was the first one that I did. It was the first iteration. And I wanted to show afterwards the, that I ended up changing the spread quite a bit, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually redid it because I knew by the time that the editor at Running Press said, okay, you know what? We want to do this book with you. And what an amazing experience. And by the time we finally were able to start, uh, we did, we worked on the writing a lot together, which definitely takes some time. She said, okay, are you ready to start on the final art? And I knew then and there, I said, okay, I, I, I feel way more confident in the direction I want to go with this. Uh, I really want to push the color element even more. Uh, I'm going to redo this spread. And she said, all right, cool. You do you. And I'm so happy I did. I, I, I'm, I love to be able to put these back to back and see even just like subtler changes. The composition is fairly the same, but even with a few tweaks, it makes such a difference. And so many more characters have um, now crept into the illustration. Exactly. Yes, exactly. I feel like there's just a lot more movement, a lot more to look at. I think yes. growing up, a lot of my favorite books. Uh, I was very drawn towards uh, picture books and chapter books where there was a lot of pictures. I was definitely a, it took me a bit to catch up with reading like the rest of my other classmates. So what kept me going were all the pictures. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I, and <laughs> I struggled to read a lot. <laughs> so seeing, being able to see in the pictures, in the illustrations of not only seeing what the characters are doing, how they feel, what expressions can I read from them. I was also able to kind of find, oh, look at that little Easter egg of that little rabbit in the corner. Or look at that little, I used to have one of those I Spy books where it was find all the geckos. I, I got to find mm -hmm. that book. That It was one of my most cherished books. I love little, including little details. So as the parent is reading, mm -hmm. uh, a kid can enjoy finding all the really cool things that I left behind for them. Yeah, definitely. Wonderful. And then after that, you, you spend a lot of time. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to escape from this. I'm going to, actually, I skipped a little bit. I figured I would show, hopefully people can see the screen still. I wanted to kind of show you once, <laughs> Before you do all the final art and stuff like that, uh, there's a couple of different steps that you do, at least what I do. So I wanted to include, these are extremely, extremely rough thumbnails of, okay, what kind of compositions do I want in each page? So I will take a little rectangle tool and spread it all across and I'll number all the pages out. And that way I can see it all at once and I can see, does the book flow? Does it, are, are there certain things repeating uh, such as, okay, do I want to have two spot illustrations, then a full illustration follow 
a full illustration or do I want it to follow a certain thing? It's all about how, what makes you want to turn the page and what makes sense to your eye in composition. So these are very rough and I wanted to show that. I think yeah. we might need to see a different um, Oh no. image. It, okay, you know what? This might be way too rough. Why don't I show? No, no, no. I think you've got, it's, it says in this one, it's a real book, right? Are we, look, are we looking at thumbnails? Oh, you know what? Uh, you know what? That's because I realized what's wrong. I'm sharing the wrong thing. So let me new share. Thank you. I'm so sorry about that, everybody. I didn't want to interrupt you, but <laughs> I realized that uh, we aren't looking oh. quite at the same image that you just Oh, no. See, I, don't you, <laughs> isn't that so funny? Okay, let me go back. Sorry, everybody. I, I don't do Zoom very often, actually. So, uh, new share. There we go. That looks okay, like is it is it working? Now? Yeah, that looks like all your thumbnails, like little sketches, right? Working through little panels. This is a layout, a rough layout, and then we can zoom in now. So this is how Zoe does all her little rough thumbnails to work out the entire book. Oh, hang on, we've lost your volume. We've lost your sound. Audio. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, can hear you. All right. Perfect. I love I love technology, right? <laughs> <Fun>. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just quickly go over again, uh, just showing my sketch process, doing very rough thumbnails, like very, very, very rough. And this is just to help me kind of gauge the not only the flow of the book, just how each individual composition will read, uh, and keeping things interesting. And you see my giant scribbles right here. <laughs> Uh, and then, okay, I'll make sure I'll do this correct this time. So I wanted to show, ooh, let me do it in, I'll open with preview and then new share. And then now it should be sharing this one. Okay. You should be able to see some sketches, right? Oh yes, yes we can, yeah. Wonderful, okay, great. I wanted to show my first initial uh, sketches that I did with the publisher. And these are a lot more cleaner sketches than my uh, <laughs> thumbnails. Yeah, those are great sketches. Oh, thank you. I think for me, uh, I definitely need my sketches pretty clean. So mm -hmm. I know where everything is. I know what to paint where. And yeah. Ugh. It's, it's fun to go back down memory lane. <laughs> All right, yeah, I showed those. And then I'll even show, I'll make sure to open Photoshop. And let me know if we're uh, good on time too. Oh, yes. Well, Wonder yep. Okay, I'm going to share, new share. Is it sharing Photoshop now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yay, wonderful. OK, so I wanted to show probably my favorite spread of the book. Uh, I am a sucker for silent spreads, no text, because you can just kind of take everything in and look for all the fun details. So I wanted to show how intense I go, at least in the past, how intense I would go with individual layering with, <laughs> with my digital art process. So I'm just gonna take things away. And as I'm taking things away, you're thinking, wow, there's just crazy blobs of color. And uh, that's kind of how I did it. I uh, laid down, my favorite way to work is just laying down a bunch of colors to kind of gauge a color palette. Yeah, this looks crazy now. <laughs> Yeah, that looks like fine art. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so from there, yeah, I just, this is kind of how I figure out, uh, I'll pick up some colors that I'm gravitating to. I, I knew I wanted to do a dark but whimsical forest scene, something that makes you feel it's a little mysterious, but it's still warm and welcoming. So, mm -hmm. and so I'll have like a straight up background layer and then I'll add a grass layer and I'm using all different sorts of uh, custom brushes. I'll use 
brushes on Photoshop that emulate watercolor. I'll use brushes that em emulate gouache or pastel or colored pencil. And, mm -hmm. and then even then, I'll e I even broke down a lot of stuff like, <laughs> like this. And then from there, just slowly adding the pieces together. And even I'll even zoom in on Georgia, where mm -hmm. I even had her pretty separated. So mm -hmm. her hat's on her own layer, glasses, just in case. I don't work like this anymore because uh, this took a lot of time. But it was great for if I needed to go back and fix anything. Yeah. That is the beauty of digital for sure. It, exactly. I've learned my lesson far too many times. So this is a very deconstructed version. Uh, and then and there's the rest of it. And I, I think my favorite part of the process is always doing really little details. I even uh, used a fun sweater brush here. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. I love it. It's just really, in, it's very inspiring to see how you created this on the digital program. It's beautiful. So many colors as well. You really do add a lot of rich colors. Thank you. Uh, my favorite colors tend to be, I've been told uh, jewel tone. So I, I, I really like that a lot. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So I'll uh, close out of, hang on. I will stop sharing this one. Let me go back, figured I'd clean up and then I'll go back to my presentation. So you can all see my presentation again, right? Yeah. Yep. Yay, wonderful. Okay. So after that process, I it takes including the writing, the thumbnailing, the sketching, the final art, and then all those final tweaks after months of work. <laughs> I finally get to send everything off to the publisher. And then it's the waiting game. And you wait and you wait and you wait. And then I think it was probably like six months to a year later, I finally got my first copy of the book. That's and so it's, it's just, it's so exciting. It feels like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, oh yeah, you know what, let me. So I either have planned out, I can show either right now how I color Georgia. I actually can pull out, uh, my little tablet right now and I can show how I just color in or I can move on to the color portion. So in terms of the slideshow. So. Um, let's see, so we've got the, um, are you going to do a little reading of the book as well? Yes, I'm happy to read whenever it makes sense to. So I figured actually, you know, let me, fin I'll finish the presentation, I'll read the book and then we'll do the fun art stuff. Yeah, so perfect. yay, okay, so Going after finishing up with Georgia, I, I want to talk about color because that's, I like to think it's a little bit of my bread and butter. I'm still learning, but I feel, I feel pretty good about it. So I love using color. It's one of my favorite uh, elements of art to use along with uh, texture and lighting and hue and so on and so forth. But what is the power of color? So colors can do a lot of amazing things. Colors can convey emotions and feelings. If someone's feeling happy, if someone's feeling sad, if someone's feeling angry, usually mm -hmm. colors are a really good indicator of how you want to convey not only what a character's feeling, but maybe what it, the whole environment feels like. Uh, with colors, you can create movement and rhythm and visual patterns. So in Georgia, like I'll show, I like to use a lot of color to kind of sway the composition to have your eye follow down and uh, follow with the composition in Georgia's character. And I do it a lot in my pieces too, to kind of keep movement going for your eye and make it fun to look at. Uh, color can unify scene and composition, again, kind of going with the whole movement thing. Uh, so using a unified color palette can keep things feeling together, not disjointed, uh, feeling like a character fits into a scene. So if you're doing a night scene and it's dark out, it probably makes sense to have a character color palette to be very similar to what would fit into a nighttime scene. Uh, so another thing that colors can do is uh, calm a scene or create energy. Uh, do you want your piece of art to feel relaxing? Is your character trying to relax reading a book next to a fire as there's snow falling outside? 
Or are you trying to create a character who's rocking out on their guitar in the, <laughs> at a rock concert? Those two, those two different scenes are gonna evoke very different color palettes. Even uh, drawing a character uh, laying out at the park, you can go two different directions with that. Do you want it to feel exciting? Such as, oh, I am playing tag with my friends out in the park and the sun is shining so bright. Or do you wanna create a calm scene such as having a nice relaxing picnic under the shade of the branches as uh, clouds fly by. You can you can create so many different feelings just from that through color. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, colors uh, evoke symbolism. So a lot of colors. So when you think of red, you can th you usually associate it with love or anger or even food. Uh, a lot of <laughs> advertising for fast food they use the color red because it mm -hmm. makes you hungry. Uh, usually you take a color like green and green is considered a very calming color. Uh, they use it a lot if you want to use it in your office or baby's room because uh, it invokes a lot of calming feelings within yourself. And take purple. Purple is considered a very royal color since purple was very hard to come by back in the day for, <laughs> for natural dyes. So those who got to wear purple usually were the royalty. So different things like that in life uh, and so on and so forth. And there's so much uh, outside of, you know, the typical color, color symbolism too. So color can be used in any way you want. Heck, even Van, I believe it was Van Gogh who kind of flipped the understanding of color palettes in his own paintings. He considered, oh gosh, don't quote me on this. I remember he used to like yellow meant a very specific color versus red and so on and so forth. So artists can have their own in cool interpretations of uh, how they use color. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I will we'll go on a little art lesson right now. <laughs> so uh, I will start with, there's different types of color palettes or color ideas that we can work with on the color wheel, whether literal or more interpretative. Um, I, I'm not sure if I said that correctly, but close enough. <laughs> of uh, how you want to go about creating your art piece. So let's take complementary, for example. So complementary is when two colors are on the other opposite sides of each other on the color wheel. So I included this piece of mine because I wanted to use lots of oranges and greens uh, and oranges and blues, which orange and blue are opposite each other of the color wheel. So I thought it'd be fun to use this as an example. And I wanted to also show too, as I'll show in my other pieces along the line is, excuse me, color palettes can be further expanded. You don't have to go super literal with anything. So I took the idea of blue and orange in this, but I expanded it outside many other colors. I use red, I use uh, brown, purples, and so on and so forth, green to, but I use blue and orange as a starting point. So mm -hmm. I thought using, a lot of blue greens and red oranges would be perfect to convey a Halloween scene. And that's my little vampire baby. <laughs> uh, analogous color palettes. So analogous is when you're using a color palette focusing on colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So for instance, my base for this scene were blues, purples, and violets. And the reason why I went down that route is I wanted to convey not only a night scene, but a winter scene. And I thought, oh, usually when I'm thinking of a, okay, oh yeah, for example. So you see the lights from the houses from below in the village, how in the glow of the moon, that, that kind of adds a little bit of warmth. So it's not just one tone and so on and so forth, and including the bread because it's Christmas and all that good stuff. <laughs> uh, triadic. Triadic is three colors, but you'll have two colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, and you'll add a color from the other opposite side of the color wheel. So for this Nessie piece that I did, I wanted the background to be mostly blues and greens, and I thought, having pops of red and orange, mostly red, would be a really fun touch and kind of add a nice 
highlight color to bring some warmth into the space. And tetradic, I hope I said that correctly, uh, that's four. <laughs> so uh, this is an Iceland piece that I'm still working on uh, that I was inspired about my time when I was in Iceland a few years back. Absolutely beautiful place. I was very inspired to go greens, yellows, purples, and reds. And I took a little bit of creative liberty. And for my red, I went pink because it's close enough, right? It's a different hue of red. So yeah, you don't need to be strict on your color, your color choices. Use palettes as a starting point. Uh, that's what I usually do. I'll, I'll take little snippets of colors that I really enjoy and I'll paint on top of them. And from there, I create a color palette that I end up really liking and it stays cohesive that way. I wanted to show not only uh, just, you know, basic using analogous uh, uh, tetradics, so on and so forth. I thought it'd be fun to kind of show, okay, what if we're trying to convey a certain mood? So I have two examples here, a blustery beach and a toasty terrain. I thought it'd be fun to do some alliterations. And even though, this, even though they're both fantasy subjects, the moods feel totally different because of the color palettes. So take, for example, the blustery beach. I'm using a lot of cool tones, such as gray blues and uh, greens and grays, and just a hint of orange as a pop of color. So this is great to kind of convey, okay, it's not very warm outside. I would imagine it's a little breezy. It's quiet, it's mysterious, but it's also whimsical. Uh, and it makes me want to go out and wear a big old yellow raincoat and explore the uh, <laughs> the sandy beaches. It's uh, just a really chill, calming scene that is way different than the bottom image, which even though they're sitting down, it feels like there's more energy going on because of all the bright colors. So even though I'm using cools and warms in this piece, I went more pastel in my piece right over here. So with lots of emphasis on warm colors mostly, you get that it invokes uh, feelings of uh, magic and excitement and it's very inviting. You wanna sit, go and sit down with them. It sounds like they're having a grand old time. And plus having an accent color of purple helps add whimsy since purple's not really used a lot in, uh, in nature naturally and so on and so forth. I wanted to pull up another book that I have as an example of the what ifs. And this is another great example of even just from the color palettes, how you can tell what feelings Cora is feeling inside. So taking the bottom image with the bad what ifs, mm -hmm. I'm using a lot of more muted tone colors. I'm using very funky and uneasy colors, colors that you didn't, you wouldn't think they would really go together. And it helps kind of can help push up her anxiety more. You feel for her. This feels like a very chaotic um, image. It it's it's kind of showing all the crazy things that are going on in her head and what she's worried about. Mm -hmm. And of course the bad what ups are all hanging by her head. And with those, I try to go a little bit darker, but still fun color palettes. Cause we're, we, this is still a picture book and we still, we don't want it too scary or anything. Uh, but with the good what ifs, I went with a lot of more cheery colors. I went really bright and pastel and everybody loves rainbows. So it, it invokes a feeling of warmth and she has so much more confidence and she feels like herself. She doesn't have a care in the world. She's feeling good and, she's, and she deserves to. She's ready for that piano recital. And of course, she's got all the fun good what ifs joining her as the other bad what ifs uh, slink away. Yeah, and that was kind of me going over how I usually pick colors uh, in terms of my book work, but I thought it'd be fun to kind of now do, do the fun art part. So I figured I can escape over here. I can do, I'm gonna do two different things. I am going to pull out my trusty tablet, go back into Photoshop and just quickly show how I color things digitally. And then from there, 
I'll connect to my phone and I'll show you how I do things traditionally and we'll do fun exercises with that. That sounds awesome, Zoe. And don't forget just a little look through the actual book. You're right. Oh my gosh, you know what? You don't have yeah. to read the whole story because we do want to get on with some wonderful drawing with you. But Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. I was just I was just so excited to do some I art. Know. That I totally <laughs> I was like, oh, I have a book to read. <laughs> And the participants are definitely excited to draw along with you, but it'd be really lovely to see. You can just tell us the story and show us the pictures. That would be great. Yeah, yeah whatever works. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Oh, goodness. I want to make sure we have enough time. So I'll do a really quick read if that works for everybody. Yes. Yeah, so, we, um, let's highlight your screen there. Let's see how. Yes, I'll stop. I'll stop screen sharing. Yeah, perfect. And then you can there go. There we go. Oh, okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So. Oh goodness, I hope, I'm realizing it's like backwards on my end or reverse. I know, it's, so, perfect for, it's perfect for us, okay. we can see it's perfect. Right. Awesome, yeah. wonderful. So this is Georgia's terrific colorific experiment by Zoe Prosecco. And I had fun with the end papers. I love doing end papers. Yes, those are really fun. They could be wrapping paper, that's so cool. Yeah, okay. This is Georgia. She comes from a family of fantastic artists. Her mother, father, brother, and grandma leave Georgia in awe of everything they create. Even the family dog has some creative ideas. Mm -hmm. But Georgia is special. She dreams of being a scientist from the vastness of the cosmos to the cell structures of plants and animals she is fascinated by science. So this yeah. is the spread that we saw earlier. Georgia loves studying the works of famous scientists too. She is captivated by Marie Curie's studies on radioactivity. She admires Galileo Galilei's discovery of gravity and she fawns over Isaac Newton's conclusions about the color spectrum. Mm -hmm. One day, Georgia has an idea. I've read countless studies and handfuls of hypotheses, but I have never created my own unique experiment. If I can do that, I am sure to be a great scientist. And this is her room. So she's got a lot of really cool people like Jane Goodall's right here. She's got the planets and periodic table. Need any help? Her mother asks. I can show you how to sketch out your plans. No, thank you. Let me give you a few tips, her father states. I think adding some color could really enhance your scientific findings. Mm, that will not be necessary. I don't know, Georgia. You need a pop of visual awesomeness, her brother says. I could show you how to sculpt something amazing. I don't know, she's not looking too hot at the dinner table. Enough. I don't need any help. I am not an artist. I am a scientist. Science is about proper calculations and not silly imaginative ideas. Fine, her brother says. Don't be like us. Go ahead with your fancy schmancy calculator books and beakers. Hopefully your experiment doesn't bore you too much. <laughs> well, that's very mean. <laughs> I know, exactly. He's a very mean brother. <laughs> well, since my science seems to be boring you, I could be found in my science hut alone. With a leap at her step, Georgia packs everything she can and leaves the house. Past the garden and through the gate, she runs into the woods. <laughs> and my favorite spread, ooh, hanging out. Yeah, beautiful. Georgia can finally begin her experiment and be a true scientist. At first, she's having the most extraordinary time. Having some fun there. But then she has some trouble getting started. Oh, I can color the, I can study the color spectrum, but this has been done before. 
well, what about how gravity works? Wait, this has been done before too. Oh, I know, I'll create my own radioactive material, Georgia says. But that's not original or safe, is it? <laughs> not to be doing in her bedroom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Georgia sighs. She needs to come up with her own ideas to create something special. Georgia has the motivation, but where's the inspiration? How do scientists come up with such amazing experiments? What am I missing? Mm. That's me on most days trying to come up with an idea. <laughs> <laughs> but then an idea strikes. How does my family get creative, she wonders. Georgia tries something new, something that's not from her library. It feels odd for her at first, but with every colorful beaker she fills and each new shape she draws, her excitement grows. That is a very exciting spread. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Science and art coming together. Yes. It is time to head home. Georgia makes her way back. What do you want? Rubbing your boring science in our faces, asked her brother. I wanna show you all something, Georgia says. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Science can be a work of art too. So she's got her beaker going with a beautiful, colorful explosion. Yeah. Georgia's mom smiles. I bet you can teach us some fun science facts that'll help us with our art. And Georgia smiles back. And I bet you can give me some great art tips so I can invent more beautiful experiments. Such a great story. So this is Georgia, the scientist, and her family of fantastic artists. They used to work separately, but together they'd create sculptures, paintings, and experiments that leave everyone in awe. Even the family dog helps out. Georgia and her family agree. When art and science work in harmony, are working in harmony, inspiration never runs dry. Ta-da! Yeah, yeah. Family working together. <laughs> Very important to work together. And she's an important part of it because she's the only scientist. Exactly. Scientists. Everyone has something to contribute. They do. That's great. Yeah. Um, um, just one quick little request from Simone, who's just asked, would it be okay to just have a quick sighting of zombie? Is zombie right there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And then we have uh, some other questions during the workshop, which is <laughs> all about your art and your drawings and all of that. But there's oh, where's goodness. That? He, he's hiding in the corner. Hang on. Got to move my laptop. He's, he's is he in the bed? bed? Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's we can see his bed. eyebrows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there he is. Hang on. He's a good studio yeah. dog. Yeah, I usually have my studio dog here as well. Hi, big dog. Oh, oh, there he is. Look, everybody. Hey. There's the famous zombie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Morgan says hi. Everybody's saying thank you for sharing, and the book is amazing. I think, yeah, I think it's time to play. <laughs> yeah, he's quite big. <laughs> I think someone's oh, quite quite big. Zombies quite big. Okay, so <laughs> sorry to distract you there, but that was something that was kind of fun to know because yeah, you've, you've all met zombie. Look out for zombie in some future book that Zoe will probably be featuring. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So we're all excited to start drawing and I, you know, there are some fantastic questions as well. So um, yes, guys, so everybody, if you can write in the chat or you can write in the Q&A, the chat is working. Um, so he's now going to get herself organized to share with us a little digital and then some uh, traditional drawing. So oh my goodness, I'm even looking at the time right now. I might even just jump uh, traditionally. Okay, go straight to, uh, yeah, we've seen some of your technique just in the slideshow. So that Yeah, exactly. Oh my goodness. Guys, time flies when you're having fun, right? <laughs> so the wonderful thing is everyone can re uh, look at this video in the next week or so when it goes up on our YouTube. And so you can continue drawing more along with Zoe. Um, so if you're having fun with the color, which is a really great workshop, is working with color. And you are certainly the color girl. You oh, saw. gosh. So many colors in this particular book as well. Amazing. Okay, I am going to, let's see if this works. Okay. 
So if I switch it to this mode. Okay. All right. Now it should work. Okay. Yep. We this see is crazy on the screen there. Yeah. Trying to do so much at once. Let me, I'm going to pop myself over here so I can make some room. All these crazy things, all these crazy things. Okay. It's a really fun teaching tool though, because we can see your hands drawing away there. Yep, that looks really good. Yay, okay. I think we are good now. I'll just fix that up. Wonderful, okay. Cool, cool, cool. We may just need to highlight, yeah, we go. There we go, perfect. All right, uh, y'all can see okay? Yeah, that looks great. Yay, okay, so. I figured is if we have time for it, I will show how I work with different materials. Uh, yep. I'll show off how I use colored pencils. So I got all my awesome colored pencils right here. I, this just looks some of my favorite colors. I got some crayons over here. And I'll show you how I use these materials. Oh my gosh, so much, so much. And if I have time, I will play with gouache too. So I figured kind of what this exercise I want to show is basically picking a color palette and from there kind of figuring out, okay, what does this, what does this emote to me? Like what kind of feelings, what is this kind of character doing? Okay. And what, you know, emotions and so on and so forth. So what I'll start with, uh, since I had a chance to practice this earlier, I'll go Neo Colors. So they're such a fun material and they're, they're like, they're adult crayons. So this was a color palette that I picked out earlier and I got handfuls of mostly blues and darker colors, but you know what, I'm going to take this out and we got a splash of a pink. Mm -hmm. You're probably wondering why do I have pink? Cause I think it'll help us convey, it's always good to have a little bit of, if you're going to have a mostly cool or mostly warm palette, you just have one. I like to have at least one color of the opposite just to kind of add some more. So what I'll do is I'll quickly sketch out a character. And when I think of these colors, I think of a character that's a little bit more mysterious. So trying to go decently fast. So we do have, oh, sorry, yeah, I'll let you get on with that for a minute, but we do have some questions. I'll, I'll slip those in shortly. <laughs> oh, you, no, you're all good. I just want to make sure y'all can see this, right? Yes. Okay. I, I can see it, so I'm hoping everyone else is good as well. Yeah, I try to pick a, a color pencil that's uh, definitely dark enough. Yes, that's good, yeah. So she's definitely sad. She's got a little tear because she's sad. She's having a tough day. Okay, so that's like a really quick character sketch. Ta -da. Okay, so from there, what I'm going to do the cool thing about these crayons too is you can sharpen them. So, all right. So I'm just gonna start coloring in. Feel free to throw questions or anything. I'm more than happy to answer. Oh, I'm okay, let's, let's, yeah. let's have a, Okay, awesome. So um, Morgan has a few questions and the first one is a great question. Um, how do you come up, up with the identity of your characters? So, that's a good one. So I would imagine like if you're getting a manuscript from another author, um, the identity is somewhat written in the story that you have to work from that. But when it's your own um, characters. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I'm trying to think because usually when I work with publishers, uh, surprisingly, uh, I don't really get a ton of Oh, you know what? I'm going to add this color too. And before I answer the question, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Yep. I want to tone this down. 
and the cool thing with these crayons is you can layer on top of each other and it'll make a new color, very similar to colored pencils. So instead of just being a full on gray or full on pink, I'm mixing the two together and I'll keep layering them on top of each other and I'll make a really nice, like, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh no, you're all good. <laughs> I was worried. I was worried. I was gonna have notifications <laughs> pop up too. Uh, to answer the question, when I'm working with publishers, usually I would think, um, you know, the author has a particular vision of what they want their characters. But usually, it hasn't been the case. Usually, I what I'll do is I'll just do a full sheet of just trying to experiment around. And, and then I'll show it to the publisher and they'll let me know, oh, we really like this one. This one's sticking with, with, with us. So now I'm going to go with this blue. And I'll, I'm going to put this in the eyelids and all of the darker areas. So now we're starting to get a little bit more depth here. So it's not like a traditional skin tone or anything, but it's showing that it doesn't have to be you can play with colors to convey like different moods and feelings so usually if i'm working with a publisher they'll usually let me know okay like we think that this character design is working really well let's let's go this route uh but mm -hmm. if it's something on my own usually i try to think of okay if a character is going to be a wizard uh, clothing definitely, obviously, makes a, a huge impact, but I'm also thinking, what kind of demeanor do they have? Are they a young wizard? Are they going on an adventure? See, these are great crayons because they just blend so nicely. They know. are nice. I don't know those crayons. They look amazing. Um, actually, I'm just going to mention here, Simone asked, um, well, this is her, what, what she said, you have a great way to make colors work. I agree with you. <laughs> and they look super harmonious and beautiful. My question is, how do you manage to use muted colors without them feeling muddy and also bright colors without them hurting your eyes? Yeah. That, <laughs> uh, it live. I, We're seeing it live how you do it. So <laughs> layering guys, right? Yeah. Layering makes a huge, like I'm using a white right now and I'm just kind of softening it up. I wonder yeah. if I can make it a little lower like maybe i'll bring it up a little closer if you can see so i'm just slowly just playing with layers to kind of blend it out it started off as like a really bright pink but i muted it down by layering on top of it yes and and so you can do this um uh, this effect with colored pencils and you can also do it with watercolor correct and gouache correct would you yes. say Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And even in digital art too, uh, I like to try and paint things very digital, uh, uh, traditionally. Like, so I'll try and treat it like a regular painting and I'll paint on top of things. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of what's my next move. <laughs> As I go, we're playing it. I'm going to blend this out a little bit more. Yeah, it really makes, it's, it's great. It's, it's really coming across very well um, and morgan said thank you for sharing your beautiful book it's so bright and beautiful like summer colors so true that's right yeah. thank you yes oh goodness that was my first um actual big picture book uh that that's crazy and my style has changed so much from then mm -hmm. you know what i'm gonna do see you start with the color palette and then you're thinking oh how do i include other really cool colors. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out some big guns now. <laughs> <laughs> if I can open it. Oh my goodness. And I'm just gonna pick out some. I'm gonna take pulling out. I, I don't know if I'm gonna go the purple or the orangish brick red yet. So mm -hmm. let's let's try the purple first. See if it's and if it and again if it's too bright. I will mute it down. So for everybody who might want to know specifics about um, Zoe's materials, um, Tim has kind of put it in the chat. So he's typed it in there for you. Um, you can always send me an email if you have further questions. And also 
don't be shy to send in your illustrations. Uh, I'd love to share those with Zoe and we'd love to see what you do. Um, I also wanted to mention that Jennifer said great story, Zoe. Um, so your, your reading was very um, appreciated. Actually, it was really nice to see you just, you know, turning the pages and Aww. sharing it like we were in the room with you. Oh, uh, I'm so glad. I'm so uh, glad you like it. And a lot of appreciation for seeing zombie, zo uh, zombie. Kate. Yes. Said, zombie. <laughs> Hi, zombie. <laughs> so I'll show a little close up again. Hopefully you can see uh, how I've just been slowly layering it on top of each other. Mm. So it started with a really bright, like it started as this pink. Yes. But we've muted it down pretty nicely, and it kind of helps convey um, a more chiller sadder somber kind of pink mm -hmm. Amazing. it's really wonderful to see you work like this it's great oh thank you oh my goodness yeah it's i think this is the first time i'm actually showing how uh i work traditionally so another thing i want to show too is uh another thing with layering is i'll take Actually, I should probably do it on this side so it's easier for y'all to see. Ooh. Actually, Zoe, I did come across you painting a fox on YouTube. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. So if anyone wants to check out uh, Zoe's YouTube video of her painting a fox, that was that with gouache, I think. Gosh, I'm trying to even remember how long ago that was. Oh my goodness. I couldn't tell you, actually. I know I did. I remember I did a like a quick Barnes and Nobles thing where I I drew uh, a uh, a French bulldog like mm -hmm. out of my sketchbook. I think that's somewhere on YouTube somewhere. Oh, that would be fun to search. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna start with as a starting point. So th these are so fun. They're so juicy mm -hmm. and very fun. So I'll usually start with like a light layer like this, and of course we could easily just keep that blue but I think it'd be fun to even push it a little bit more. So I'll take something, let's mix some colors in. So I'll take this like kind of greenish blue. I apologize for my nails. <laughs> and it can, it like, it just layers so nicely. Ah, uh, so actually uh, we have a question because some of the materials have been and uh, items that you use are in the chat, but actually the name of these crayons, <laughs> could you tell me again? Yes, they're called uh, Neo Color 2s. I'll even show the box. Okay. Ta -da. These are awesome. These are Oh, okay, fun. by Karen Dash. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, these are awesome. They're yeah. a little bit on the pricier side, but I think they're so worth it. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. So from there, I added a little bit of that and out of curiosity, I want to take some of this pink and bring it into here and see what kind of color situation we got going on. And even it just like tones it down a little bit, but it blends so nicely. I might even like bring some of that in here. And then we'll take some of this black. And like I've sharpened it so it'll we can do some nice fun details with it. Again, this is very rough because I, I just want to stay on time, but I hope oh, I'm good. sharing the general idea where basically I'm just taking basically just these colors and I'm creating new colors out of it. Mm -hmm. That's really great. So it's it's a good suggestion just to select, you know, a palette as Zoe did. And remembering that you want to have one that's a little bit lighter to contrast against the darker ones, some tones, and then just play with that color palette. And that's yeah. going to create um, an, an emotion or a, an atmosphere. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Like, I'm just playing around, even just like, I think it's so fun that like, I just included a little pink highlight in that mm -hmm. area and it just, yes, I don't know, it just adds some fun interest. I just want to have some fun. That's, that's what we're here for, right? Oh, there was a really good question. I'm going to go back to that question. It was about how long it takes for you to, to, you know, when you did the book, um, George's 
um, terrific colorific. Um, <laughs> I have to read it again. George, I know, it's so long. <laughs> I, wanted another, I wanted to add another word. In there. George's <laughs> colorific experiment. <laughs> so when you did the book um, about how long, although you, you did share in the presentation all the thumbnails and all the, um, you know, lead up to doing the final art. How long did it take to do the actual final art? Was it um, yeah. several months? Yeah, I would say it probably after, not including the sketches, it probably all the art together probably took probably three or four months, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I'd say that's on average um, to do a 32 uh, page color picture book. That's on average what it takes. Sometimes it takes some artists a bit longer. Um, but you had tried it pretty much um, sketched out. You did some really um, nicely finished sketches so they could really see, you know, the editor and the art director could really see what you were going to do once you started coloring. You did some color samples. So that's, that's yeah. what we like to see, yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Keep asking these wonderful questions, everyone. Yeah, and yeah, I hope it's coming off on camera okay. I'm, oh, I'm no, just... it does, it is coming across really well. Oh, and I've got a really good question from Morgan. Do you have any advice for creating backgrounds? Yes, you are a real master of backgrounds. <laughs> oh my goodness, thank you. Know, gorgeous Disney films, you know, like Fantasia and oh, the, you know, Snow White, these classic Disney films that had the most amazing backgrounds. Were you inspired a bit by um, any of that type of illustration as well? Oh, absolutely. When, uh, so I can list off some of ins my inspirations that these credits are, can be a little messy, but this is what, what I, uh, what I got, which is yes. nice. I'll even, Beautiful. I'll even just quickly swatch these colors to kind of help show you just taking a small amount of colors and what you can do with them. Yes. These, are just, these are just from crayons. Yes. See, how fun is that? <laughs> yeah, those are really gorgeous colors. Yeah, um, I highly recommend it. Yeah, uh, in terms of uh, artists that I've looked at, uh, if we're gonna go straight to a Disney uh, film, Sleeping Beauty, Ivan Earl did the backgrounds. <laughs> Uh, for that amazing film. Uh, definitely looked into his work. There's other amazing artists and current illustrators that I look at a lot and I'm really inspired by. Some of them include Ellie Oli, uh, Rebecca Green. Uh, gosh, I'm gonna butcher her name because she's French. Uh, Amelie, uh, Amil, or it's Amelie Fletchius, I believe. Her work is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's funny, I actually look at a lot of um, traditional artists from Europe <laughs> a lot of the time. Oh, yes. I, yes. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch materials now since I want to stay on track. Cool. A very quick, quick, quick question if you haven't put them back yet. Oh, what yeah, were yeah. those actual colors that you were using? Can you? Yes. Oh, them? my goodness. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. So, oh, my goodness. All right. We got here. Who is this one? Yeah. We got, I don't think I used that one. Yeah, you didn't use uh, that one. That, that looks oh, smart. This one? Did I use this one? I don't know. No, you didn't use that one, I don't think. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We just no, got a question you're... in. <laughs> no, no, that's all good. Okay. So we got uh Malachite Green. Mm-hmm. Malachite Green. We have light blue. Mm-hmm. We have purple violet. Mm-hmm. We have salmon pink. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this one got really small. I'm gonna guess it's like um, it's not ultramarine blue. I, it, I'm looking at the French ver <laughs> part at the very end. Uh, it's a type of blue. I'll get back to you on that one. But is it in then, French? Uh, the last part is. It, it got cut off it's oh. you know what I, I wonder because i i use this one so often i wonder if they're on the it's back. like a um violety blue a lavendery blue yes mm -hmm. yeah it's like a lavendery blue Let me lavendery see. blue yeah dang i did not hang on to the little they usually give you a little booklet mm -hmm. but if need be I, I will i will find this color i will find it for you um <laughs> then black and then a uh, light gray I like okay. using light gray as a, a blender. 
as a blender yes that's important yeah and then white is a and, oh, and too. white too yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah those are the colors i you surfy <laughs> <laughs> okay cool then i'll switch to uh i will switch to how much time we got do i can go color pencils or i can go gouache um maybe do you think uh which is easier for you is is colored pencils quicker i don't know you could probably do both uh either yeah, yeah i guess i the colored pencils are right here so let's go for them so okay. i am going to pick out a quick color palette i'm gonna i since i went cooler last time i'm gonna go warmer this time and a, a question from taikisha because you were just actually mentioning european um inspiration some european artist inspiration do you have a couple of names come to mind uh yes oh gosh what is his name so many. <laughs> i know um shoot you know what you know, i have a i have like a pinterest board that has like a bunch of them oh great yes yeah, so you can follow if you go to zoe's website there'll be an icon for her Pinterest, right, Zoe? Yeah, I think, yeah, I'll have to double check on that. After this presentation, I'll make sure it's up there. And then uh, you can see all of my illustration inspiration and it should have a couple in there. Wow, that'll of, be great. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. All these like great things everyone's coming up with now. And I, I was, I didn't even think of it beforehand. Uh, no, okay. you, never, you never know what's going to inspire our um, audience. So. <laughs> that is very true. You okay. Can't for every question. So that's okay. That's a good question. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go color pencils now. So I think and I'm going to get some browns in here. Do, 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 do. All right. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. So I want to make a warmer character a warmer character color palette out of this. So I will, I'll keep doing it on, I'll keep doing it on this page. So I'll do, I'll quickly sketch out a character. And these are very like happy, fun, funky colors. I think of like, I don't know, it makes me think of the seventies. Okay, so. Uh, let's see. Again, sketching as fast as I can. We can go five minutes over, don't worry. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so uh, good. it's so fun oh you've you shared so many inspirational um images and your techniques throughout the presentation and now this oh fun. wonderful okay awesome <laughs> it is a real treat to see you drawing so. oh thank you here actually i'm gonna um so betty is asking do you scan your sketches um and then finish them digitally or do you just do everything digitally I primarily do things digitally, but uh, I will say at the beginning, she's doing a thumbs up or something. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Cute. Okay. So usually I, yeah, usually I do everything digitally. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to actually, if I'm doing like gallery work or something, I'll do the sketch digitally, but then I'll paint it traditionally. And then if I'm starting a book, like what I'm doing with um, what I'm doing with my graphic novel, I actually do my thumbnails in my sketchbook. Like I'll uh -huh. do a really rough thumbnail. Like if yeah. I just need to get something on the page really fast and it's just, it helps me visualize it better then I actually prefer to do it in a big sketchbook. Right. And then from there, I don't scan it, but I'll, I'll keep it on my side table. Mm-hmm. And I'll refer back to it as I'm doing, um, if I'm do while I'm doing it digitally. So right now I'm just doing uh, the skin right now. Yeah, I love how fast you work. <laughs> it's a, uh, usually, I don't, don't feel too pressured. <laughs> uh, a little bit. I'm a little. A little bit. A little bit, but we're we're making it work, right? Actually. Oh, yes. Yes. So what I'll do, 
Actually, I don't know exactly. Astra, I think that's the brand. These are really fun color pencils. They're really bright. They're like neon. Yes, I've come across those. I have a few of those. Yes, it's, it's good for layering to have a brighter one to go on top of um, the more muted ones. Do you like um, Prisma as well? Because I've yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I'm using right now. I really like them. I also really like Karen Dash's. Um, I have those too. Yeah. I, I know. They're really nice. Again, they just get you because they're so expensive. Yeah. Um, Baby, that's another one. I'm going to go with this color. Yeah, I think Prisma is quite reasonable. I think you can get several sets with, um, you know, start a set of colors and then you can blend them. Oh, I've got some questions popping in. Let's have a look. Oh my goodness, you guys are crazy. Wow. <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, okay, this is an Ooh. interesting... I'm going to read. Oh, yeah, you're getting that going there. Shading. Did you go through a hard time with your art? I'm having a complicated time where I feel anxious, even when starting sketching, um, just not having the confidence on what to do. And I don't think she worries that she won't get the result she wants. Um, but of course, most of the time she tells herself, I'll just start, which is really important, Simone, just start. Just start. Um, don't do anything too serious. That's very true. You're giving yourself really good advice. But then after this, um, she still feels that she has a bit of fear within her. Well, do you want to talk about your um, your journey into discovering your style? I mean, yeah, and and I want and I want to uh, reiterate too. Uh, my style is still changing every day, so to already take that pressure off, like you do not need to know what you're doing. Like once you kind of take off the idea, like oh, you have to be perfect then it kind of gets easier. Just, I think for me, um, knowing that I don't have to be perfect and I, I, life is a journey, art is a journey, and I'm constantly allowing myself room to grow and experiment that yeah. it, it, the, it'll it just, the confidence just naturally gets there. And plus, you know, mm -hmm. social media pressures us so much to feel like we have to be on top of our game all the time. You do not have to, you do not have to do that. Just make art for yourself, you know? Yes, yes. Yeah, and Morgan, Morgan said that's really great advice. I agree, yeah. Oh, thanks, y'all. Yeah, and my art, again, was so much different. And it's and it's going to be different five years from now, too, you know? We're all growing. We're all, we're all just getting better. And also, as you can see with Zoe giving us um, some demonstrations of different art materials, if you try out different art materials, you'll find that you gravitate to one more than another, and then it will really make you happy. Once you find your um, material and, or, or color palette even, let's say, you, you, you start to work in a certain color palette, and that really sort of gives you more inspiration to do more artwork. So I think it's good um, to try different materials for sure. And um, All right, this also, is what we have so far <laughs> yeah. and it's it's good to have um the black for definition because you can really see how Zoe put that dark is it black or is it a dark something else yeah it's it's black but sometimes I actually like to use like a dark green too I right think. right I noticed that you do that sometimes your illustrations it's hard to see that you've even used black to be honest because yeah so I usually color. avoid I usually avoid using black I'll use black in traditional artwork mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the time but with digital like right now I'm like okay let's shade this and adding the green which I will demonstrate I mean you have like an orange and then you have a green it's like color theory I know that's very I don't know if it's going to fully show up but it helps neutralize the orange without it it, it helps darken it that's really hard to see I apologize but it's helping um, kind of neutralize it where it's not all reading as one tonal color. Cause usually in shadows, it gets cooler. Like yeah. I'll, even, I'll even take a blue mm -hmm. and even just doing this adds so much dimension. Like it, it helps um, the human face has so many different colors in it. So even just doing that, I hope it reads it does, yes. I can yeah. so see 
see that that's toned it. Yeah. Into- yeah. It like, it kind of tones it down and it gives it a little bit more dimension. Yeah. And it's, and usually, so I usually for my shadows, I'll go cooler. And then for highlights, I go really warm. So I'm going to just ask Tim behind the scenes there. Hi, Tim. <laughs> are you okay to run over a tiny bit? Because we are at 12, but it'd be really nice to see Zoe finish a little bit if we can. <laughs> I hope he doesn't. Yes, all good, he said. All good. Excellent. Oh, wonderful. Okay. okay. Yay. Oh, you guys are great. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's such a treat. We'll have you just do, you know, a few more minutes. That's good. 10 more minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. <laughs> I'm sorry we couldn't get to the gouache. I, I didn't realize I was going to go over with um, my oh, presentation. You know what, so we will have to have you back. There we I go. know. I, I guess I... Books, you know that. We've got, we've got you um, pegged for some more books. So, uh, I guess you do have to have me back. Uh, what yeah, is it going to do? We have to have you back. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I was going to implement the greens. You Even adding the greens in the shadows. Just having fun. It, there's, no, there's no rules. It's just make art that makes you happy. I, I actually recently uh, was getting into, there's like some YouTubers who do uh, oil pastels. I've never worked with that medium before, but seeing how they just lay out different colors. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to do a layering thing where I'm going to start off basically what I, I kind of did with here, but oh, this is going to be great for my wrists later. <laughs> <laughs> don't press as hard as I am. <laughs> so I am going in this with the intention that our hair is going to be a lot darker, but I am treating this like an underpainting. So this is yeah. my undercolor. Oh, yes, yes underpainting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is my undercolor. I'm going to move this a little bit. There we go. And I will add some brown with it too. And I'm naturally getting a little darker. So I have both green and brown tones in there. Just add some interest. And then I might even pop a little bit of blue in there. You're like, Zoe, this is crazy. Why are you adding all these crazy colors? Because it- I, I'm, <laughs> I'm inspired for, for a title for this girl. She's um, maybe really into vegetables and she's very excited about a new I <laughs> love vegetables, so I I am with her on this. And then I'm gonna take a darker color, so I'll I'll take my black, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna press too heavy, but I'm going dark. And as I am, mm -hmm. you still see the color underneath, so yeah. it still gives that really fun dimension. Mm -hmm. So it's not just one like blank slate color. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Color pencils are so fun. I highly yeah. recommend it. Morgan says you're very courageous with color, Zoe. It makes, <laughs> it makes her want to experiment more. <laughs> yes, please do. If I can inspire anyone to just uh, even get out of their comfort zone a little bit, that makes me so happy. Do, 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 do. Yeah, because I have definitely gone through a period of time, especially how, as another um, person has mentioned, where I did not have any confidence in what I was doing. I was still in school and I didn't know what direction I wanted to go. And I mean, even still then, I still get really bad art blocks where I'm, I'm going, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so I want to do is a little zoom in. Yeah, Look that looks that is. so you yeah. get all the different tones popping out from under the darker color. So it doesn't just read as one singular color. So this is usually how I like to work, especially traditionally. It's it's just fun. It, it, it's just like, trusting the process and just having fun with it. Uh, but yeah, I, I was definitely struggling and I didn't know what direction I wanted to go. And it wasn't until I really tried to push myself, which was the backgrounds. Uh, used to not do backgrounds. And the more I pushed myself out of my comfort zone, the it was a slow process. It's like riding a bike or getting better at another hobby or working out or so on and so forth. The more you practice, 
the more natural it's going to seem. And you're still going to have your peaks and valleys. But if I never got out of my comfort zone regarding just drawing backgrounds, um, I don't, I don't know where I would be right now. <laughs> it's going to oh, change. Right. You have to push yourself, but yes, that's true. Yeah, exactly. Push yourself. That. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Take the leap. I want the sweater. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I think yeah. that's yeah much where yeah I I was able to sneak in that much for the color pencils. We oh. did. Wow. I don't well, know how much time we have left. Yeah, I figured that would be if we need to end. That is like. We got it. We got it. We're good. We it. Yes, it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. It's been such a pleasure having Zoe this morning. She's shown so many different techniques for doing color and blending, and we will have her back again. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Please do share any of the work that you did, or if you have a bit more time to practice it over the weekend, send it in at any time. I always love to see what you create and I will share that with Zoe. You can even send her directly. Um, you can find her on Instagram and again on her website. And don't forget to check out her Pinterest for more of her inspirations over there. Uh, everyone, I know you had a really great morning. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you again for our next Saturday stories. Thanks, Zoe. It was no, really thank amazing. you. Thank you. What a colorful morning we've just had. <laughs> thank you all so much. Take care. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.